In this video, I want to talk about how you read option quotations, as well as talking about the intrinsic and time value of an option. So here we have a table of Microsoft options, and these are closing prices from July 10th, 2000, and Microsoft stock closed then at 79 and 7 16th. So if you look at this table, in this column here we have the strike or the exercise price and then we have expiration months we also have the volume that is how many options were traded last is the price that last traded open interest here it's 880 is the number of contracts that are still outstanding for, ex for example if I buy a call option, that adds to open interest. But suppose I want to close out my position. What do I do? I essentially buy back that contract. That reduces open interest. Over here, these last three columns give us the same information for a put option. Volume, last, and open interest. Now, you'll notice that here we see two 60 strike prices and they correspond to different expiration dates okay um, the expiration in August they expire the third Saturday of the month now there's no contra there's no trading on that Saturday so essentially they expire on the Friday the third Friday of the month so what's intrinsic value intrinsic value is what the option is worth right now. That is, could you use the option and exercise it and make some money? So for a call, the intrinsic value for a call option is the following. The intrinsic value is going to be the maximum of zero or S minus the exercise or strike price. And the reason we have this is, this zero part is, if this is negative, then it's worth zero. Okay, options, remember it's an option. You can use it if it's good for you to use it, but you don't have to. So if it turns out to be negative, it's simply worth nothing. Okay, you don't lose any money from it. You simply lose what you paid for it. So let's take a look at the first, the first option here. Okay, going across, we'll look at the August 60 call option. What's the price? The price is 21. So what do we have here for the intrinsic value for this option? It's the maximum of zero, stock price of 79 and 7 sixteenths minus 60. So that's going to be equal to 19 and 7 sixteenths. Now you'll notice that this price, this is what it's worth. If you were to buy the option and exercise it, in the absence of transactions cost, you would make $19 and 7 sixteenths of a dollar per share. Now notice that it's selling for more than that. It's selling for 21. Why? Because here it's July 10th, but the option doesn't expire until August, okay, third week in August. So there's still a chance for the price to go up more, right? If the price went up to $80 a share, you would make 20. If it went up to $90 a share, you would make 30. So there's still a chance for it to go up, and people are willing to pay for that. And that's what we refer to as time value. Time value in this case is equal to the premium minus the intrinsic value. So in this case, it's going to be 21 minus 19 and 7 sixteenths. So that's going to be 1 and 9 sixteenths. So you have a higher intrinsic value. I'm sorry, you have a higher time value. Take a look at the contract here. If we go to the October expiration date, now you have 
additional time until the option expires, okay, we'll still look at the 60 strike price. It has the same intrinsic value because it has the same exercise price, but notice that it's selling for 50 cents more. Now there's more time for the stock price to go up and people are willing to pay for that. If we go down here, let's say to, a, to the 75, the uh, call options with an exercise price of 75, July, August, and October, you'll notice that the July sells for five and a half, the August sells for seven and a quarter, and the October sells for 10. Now they all have the same intrinsic value, so the difference between these is the time value. And you can see that when you have more time until the option expires, people are willing to pay more for that option as a higher time value. Let's take a look at the intrinsic value for a put option. So the IV for a put is going to be equal to the maximum of zero. In this case, it's going to be the exercise price minus the stock price. Why is that? Because in the case of a put, you can sell at the exercise price even though you only pay S to buy it. So the higher the exercise price, the higher the sell price you have. So let's take a look at again at these August the August 60 put option. Let's see what its intrinsic value is. The intrinsic value here is going to be equal to the maximum of zero and the exercise price here is 60 minus the price of the stock, 79 and 7 sixteenths. And this is negative, so this is going to be equal to zero. So in this case, it's all time value, right? The time value is going to be the same. Time value is going to be equal to the, the price, okay, or the premium of one quarter minus the intrinsic value which is zero so it's a quarter so people are willing to pay 25 cents per share for the chance that Microsoft stock falls below sixty dollars a share now it's 79 and 7 sixteenths and in a you know six week period or so it's probably not that likely to fall but people are still willing to pay a little bit for it if we go, let's take a look at um, an option with a higher exercise price. Oh, and also notice that the time value goes up as the number, as the expiration date moves further into the future. So it goes from a quarter to five eighths, okay, for the 60 uh, exercise price. And you should see that consistently here. If we look at the July 75 put, it's 11 sixteenths. The August 75 put is 1 and 13 sixteenths, and then the October 75 put is 3 and 5 eighths. So that's the difference here is time value. They all have the same intrinsic value. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the July 90 put. So in this case, the July 90 put has an intrinsic value. of what? It's going to be the maximum, again, of zero, and it's going to be, again, the exercise price of 90 minus the current price, which is 79 and 7 sixteenths. So that's an intrinsic value of, let's see, 10 and 10 and 9 sixteenths. And what's it selling for? What did I pick? I picked uh, 9. I picked the July 90 put, right? So 90 minus 79 7 sixteenths. Hmm. Gee, that doesn't look right. Looks to be a, a mispricing here in that 
this thing should be selling for at least 10 and 9 16 it's only selling for nine and three quarter you know, might be an arbitrage opportunity here to pick up this option okay in this case it essentially has a negative time value which doesn't doesn't really make any sense okay how about the August uh, 90 put um, the August 90 I mean the worst it should sell for is its intrinsic value now in the real world with transactions costs you you can have some of these mispricings and the reason for that is is that if you were to buy this option and you were to exercise it with the transactions cost there's not enough difference here for you to make any money but that's kind of an oddball case you really shouldn't see this in in most cases but um, with that small differential and the fact that the option expires in you know probably less than two weeks that's why you have this funny mispricing but um, normally everything should sell for its intrinsic value okay never for less than its intrinsic value